Welcome to another tutorials. In this session, we're going to be looking at making trim sheets. We're going to look at creating the trim sheet. Then we're going to look at an asset that I've made previously and then applying the trim sheet to that asset. Let's jump in. So I've made a couple of the assets just to reduce the amount of time in this session, uh, but we can go over them quite quickly. So the main thing we're going to be looking at first is how to make a trim sheet. Now, as you can see, uh, this doesn't really look like an object that you would see on uh, a hero object, or it's not a tileable object in like, you just put this on an object and it, it sorts it out. So in this case, we actually have sort of uh, different categories that we can use on our assets. So we have sort of like a flat wall category. We have a roofing tile section. We have some concrete bricks and we have some wood elements. So what I'm planning on doing is creating sort of a small house that uses these uh, different parts of one material to texture the space. The benefits of this is it reduces the amount of draw calls on an asset. So the whole uh, house might have one material, which would be great. And it also allows us, if we want to, to use this material on different assets to sort of keep uh, a corresponding theme. Most AAA games will use this tool set in, to, in their environments. Once again, creating assets that allow builders to create themes that work for a whole environment rather than just uh, one asset at a time. It also speeds up the process. So once you have a bunch of trim sheets that you can use, you can put that into the space much faster rather than creating assets individually and unwrapping them on an individual basis. So there's lots of uh, benefits to using trim sheets. So first off, we're going to look at how did we make this trim sheet. Now, this was relatively quick. Sometimes you would spend a lot longer depending on the detail in your trim sheet. But for this case, what I did is I created a two by two model and started creating some simple elements to uh, add to the space. Uh, which I used Substance Painter to take to the next level. So this is sort of like the basic normal map that we will texture on top. Now, I could use ZBrush, I could use Substance Painter, I could use uh, Blender on only Blender. There are many different ways to create trim sheets. The main point is that if you're using tile direction in either the horizontal or the vertical, then the texture needs to be tileable. So if I have an asset that goes across here, then that will look as if it's uh, still smooth. So tileable textures in the direction that tile is very important for this development. After that, I took this into uh, Substance Painter and created a bake. So for example, we have just a, uh, a flat image that we baked this high polygon asset onto. Uh, so this is the high polygon, uh, this one here. And just to show you, this is the plane that I baked it onto. So it's very easy to put uh, this high polygon object onto high polygon. Blender can use this as well, or can do this as well, uh, as long as you use uh, cycles and the bake tool here. Uh, I believe I've done some workshops on that before. Uh, so taking it in here, baking it on that, and then applying textures on each category. So the end result is we have our three textures. So we have a diffuse, we have metallic and smoothness, and we have our normal. Now, once we have our trim sheet, we can go into Blender or our asset and create our uh, object that we want to use a trim sheet on. So in this case, it's just a simple house. Uh, on the inside and out. So got like sort of wooden doors. The base we're not really worried about too much. So we'll, we'll just apply that pretty simply, but everything else is, is done. We also have a, a door here. Now, if you look at this, uh, basically what I've done is selected all of the polygons and applied a smart UV project. And that's created that uh, just so we can make more sense of it. And then the point of trim sheets is to basically move these around onto our trim sheet. So let's look at some of the more obvious objects. And basically, 
we're going to be moving these assets, these polygons around so that it fits in a, a good location on our trip sheet. So we have all of our assets here uh, chosen. Then we can do this and then we can rotate them as we see fit. Now, because this is tiling, uh, basically we can go across this without uh, an issue. So we can make this as big as we can. But as soon as it goes down here, it will go into that area. So if you can see that, uh, which we don't want, uh, we do want these up here. And it doesn't really matter where they go. So they could go anywhere in this section. They could go all the way over there. The main point is it's in that. Now, the reason I'm making it as big as we are because I want this to tile without issues. So if I show that, you can see, let's get rid of the wireframe that the goes smooth there. So I have our basic. Now I could, if I wanted to, I could actually get rid of that. But the issue is there's not enough detail uh, without. So there's a bit of modeling and mapping at the same time. But I actually want sort of like a, a, a tiled brig effect um, going across the two. So using uh, control R to split that and then K to add a knife effect for that. And this way we can sort of do uh, a brick element. So I'm going to, once again, smart UV project. I'm also gonna do the same with the bottom rung, bottom reel, and put that separately. So down there. Um, this way we can then overlap these and overlap these. I'm also going to make sure these are aligned. So you can use align Y and align X just to make sure they're all very neat and tidy. Then we can make these, once again, because it's tiling, we can put this up to there. So as you can see, those are uh, aligned and we don't want that. So I'm gonna use G and X to move them across. And then we have a nice uh, brick. So trim sheets is kind of a mix between modeling and unwrapping to create the best result. Now the base uh, is not important, so we can actually just rotate that. Now, as you can see, I've added a few uh, polygons in here as well, uh, because I'd like to do sort of like a tiling effect. When you're using hero models and designing one UV, so zero to one on one asset, um, basically you'll probably want all of the texture, uh, texel density, so how much space a UV takes to the asset to be the same. When you're using trim sheets, you get a little bit more freedom to play around with it as long as it looks good. Now, just for argument, I can move this down and see what this looks like when it's on that. Which is kind of better. Now, the other thing we could do, just for interest sake, is I'm going to move that up to there, make these smaller. What we can do with this if we wanted to, and just as an aside, what would happen if we go there? Now, if I wanted to, I could actually take these three and move them down just to break that up a little bit more. To We have to make sure they line up. Oh, we have a sort of a door there. So as you can see, even, even with this sort of thing, uh, all the simple textured device, we're actually quite, it's actually quite easy to create very interesting textures, depending on how you line the vertices up, uh, maybe add a few poly polygon loops and things like that.
Now that you have sort of an idea of what we're doing, I'm going to time lapse uh, the rest of this uh, just so you can see what we can do with all of these assets. As you can see here, we're focusing mostly on the windows. So I'm just lining up the assets to be in the same direction, then cleaning up the vertices so they're all aligned, and then placing them in the correct strip of the texture. Uh, some of these I will use with a small bump in the middle. Some of these I will put between the bumps so you can sort of have that uh, sort of flat wood feeling. Once again, I'm ad adjusting it more for the look rather than the texel density of the asset. Now, this, of course, is sometimes more important than others. So when it comes to sort of side panels, it's less important. But if it's a, a main panel that I'll probably look at very closely, then I'll have to be a bit more careful uh, about that detail. So it's very much a case of uh, as long as it looks good, it's good. But making sure that you don't push the stretching too much. There's a lot of opportunities to play around with the, the result here. Uh, next up, we're looking at the roof. Um, now, in this case, um, I've actually added a couple of extra edge loops so I can sort of cut them up and once again, tile them with the uh, three uh, layer element that we got that. And now, as the tile is sort of facing the right way, sometimes I'll have to rotate some of these as well. Um, I do find that in this case, the sort of three was a bit too much and it didn't tile very well. So in this case, I actually moved the lower line uh, up um, and that created a much better tile for the effect there. So that's why I've sort of done an approach. I also need to sort of create uh, the length, so the height. So in this case, I've got three uh, polygon loops rather than one because that's the amount for the next group that would be similar to the previous ones. So there is a bit of sort of uh, magic and messing about with scale and size to make sure that it all lines up as best as possible. Uh, uh, now, in this case, of course, you could use either what you see on the right, but I could also use the polygons on the UV itself uh, to make sure I get the right length. So there's many different approaches to how you line up your assets correctly. So just needing to wrap up now that I've sort of got a good feel of what I'm trying to do with this space, then I can go back and refine. Um, once again, using the tactics between using the environment or the UV unwrap to create that asset. Now, when it comes to curves, you can do some quite interesting things. So this is a curve. But I actually can straighten this once again using a line X or a learn Y. And then place that in a straight loop. Um, so you can do some really interesting effects with different types of edge loops. This can actually allow you to create sort of complicated curves, uh, even though you have a straight line. As long as there's no, once again, not too much uh, warping in one way or the other you'll probably find that it's actually quite beneficial to use trim sheets on curved assets. Now, in this case, I wanted to line up the board lines to the top. So it sort of lines and goes over the edge. So in this case, I'm moving them left and right to best access that result. Each asset is its own puzzle and making sure that we get the result that works best for you is kind of part of the fun and the exploration of creating your space uh, the way you see fit. So the last thing we need to do once we've lined all this up, apart from the front and back of the roof, is the underlying of the roof, which I decided to make a sort of a wooden approach. Uh, once again, part of the uh, tile in the middle there. 
So it sort of looks like, like a deeper set framing of sorts. And the last thing I need to do there is basically the interior. So in this case for, uh, I'm just gonna create a simple uh, area of the white and making sure that's all there. And then we can put assets in there like sofas and chairs. Once again, just making sure that all of it is inside the white tiled area. So I had to break up that floor and putting in the bottom there. So as you can see, basically we can create a whole asset with one texture quite easily. We have our roof, we have our walls, we have our brick base, we have our door with an interesting design there. And all of these are done with one material. Uh, this saves a lot on draw calls, uh, looks quite good and would allow us to create a similar uh, buildings if we wanted to design uh, those sorts of things. So as you can see, trim sheets are very powerful uh, and highly recommended when it comes to environments uh, just to reduce your draw calls and make sure that your space is as performant as possible. That's it for trim sheets. Um, hope this has helped and happy building. <laughs>